If you are wondering what you need to do to receive the lump sum, then this video is for you. Indeed, we will go through the different activities you will need to produce and how to report them. As you probably know, activities of phase two are predefined. You will need to carry out six activities and therefore produce six different outputs, and we will now go through them. First of all, you will need to submit the last progress report of phase one, three months after the end of the reporting period as usual, so you will already be in phase two. Second, you will need to describe the implementation of each action plan in the progress report of phase two. And this includes the results achieved for each policy instrument and detailed on the implemented actions. In case there is no results or no implementation to report, you will need to provide the proper justification. You will have to update the project website. You will also need to organize two events. First, you will need to organize a partner meeting with at least 90% of the partnership. And back to back, you will need to organize a final dissemination event with a minimum number of participants. The minimum number of participants depend on the number of policy instruments your project addresses. If your project tackles three to six policy instruments, you will need to have at least 40 participants to your final dissemination event. In case your project addresses seven or more policy instruments, you will need to have at least 50 participants to this event. In principle, this event should be organized on site and by then we hope it will no longer be an issue. But in case the health situation does not allow certain partners to travel, an hybrid event would be acceptable. In any case, we recommend you to inform your GS officers about this. As you know, one of them will participate to your event and deliver a short presentation. Finally, you will need to submit the last progress report, the progress report of phase two. To receive the lump sum, you will need to complete these six activities and outputs. If one output is missing, the whole lump sum will be canceled. Now you are probably wondering, how can I prove these outputs were produced and then receive the phase two lump sum? Well, let's go through these different activities again. First, we said you need to submit the last progress report of phase one. And for this, there is no need to provide any supporting document. We will be able to go and check in the system directly if you did so. Second, regarding the implementation of the action plans, this will be done directly in the progress report under section two results. For the website update, again, there is no need to provide any document. We will go and check directly your website. As for the organization of the partner meeting, we will ask you to submit three documents. First, you will need to submit the agenda of the meeting, then the notes, and finally, the signed list of participants. For the final dissemination event, again, we will ask you to submit the signed list of participants and the agenda. And finally, you will need to submit the, pro the last progress report, the one of phase two, in which the lump sum will be included. So as you can see, you need to provide supporting documents only for the organization of the partner meeting and the final dissemination event. You will be able to do so directly in the IELTS system. As we mentioned in the previous video, there will be no first level control check on each partner expenditure for the last progress report, the progress report of phase two. Then it means that there will be no individual partner report, but only the joint progress report filled directly by the lead partner. As usual, two GS officers will check your progress report.